So I'm here in the statue power-up class, and before moving forwards, I want to discuss two issues with you. First, I want to show you a quick tip that can be really useful, and second, I want to discuss the naming convention for variables in our project. So let's start with the tip. Right now, I'm in the statue power-up class, and you can see that we've got all of the variables that we have seen before. I just want to draw your attention here to rotation speed. Now let's say, for example, that what we want to do in code at the beginning of the level, when the level begins, we want to search through all statue actors in the level and set their rotation speed. So we don't care how many statues there are, all we want to do is find them all and set their rotation speed automatically in code. Now, I'm not going to be actually doing this in our game, but I want to show you here how you can do it if you want to, because it's a really useful thing to be able to do when you are creating your own actors. So to do this, I'm going to jump back to the collection game info class, and we're going to be adding a post login event. This event is called when the player first enters the level. And so for a single player game, it has the effect of being called at the very beginning of the level. So I'm going to insert some space here and press Control V to paste in my code that I've created off screen. So we have our post login event here. And the real magic happens in these lines here, this for each statement. You can see that we're calling for each and all actors. And what this has the effect of doing is it searches through the level for all actors of this type. So we're searching through the level to find statue power up objects. And for each iteration of the loop, for each actor that we find one by one, a reference to that actor is stored in this local myActor variable. And then inside the braces here, all we have to do is access myActor dot and any of the variables that we want to set. So that really is a quick way of how you can search through a level and set the properties of your actors. So next, let's talk about the naming convention for variables. What I want to do is to show you Hungarian notation and how it can make your code a bit easier to read. It's a completely optional convention, but it's used quite a lot in the games industry. So let's take a look at the three variables in our class here. We have game one, statue limit, and statue counter. Now, right now, these variables do not conform to Hungarian notation, but we can easily make them do so. For example, let's take a look at the game one variable. We know that this is a type bool, that's the Boolean data type. So what we can do is just add a lowercase b to the front of game one, b for Boolean. So the statue limit variable here, this is an integer data type. So at the beginning of this variable name, we can add a lowercase i for integer like that. And the same for statue counter, this is also an integer. So I can add a lowercase i for integer. And there in doing that, we've just made our three variables compliant with Hungarian notation. You might wonder why we bother doing this. And the reason is because when we start to add more code to our source files and we start to scroll down further into the source file, we can no longer see the data type that the variable is declared as. So when we encounter the game one variable here and it's just written as game one, we do not know instantly whether this is a Boolean data type or not. But if it is prefixed with the letter B, then we can see just from the variable name that this is a Boolean data type. So that's how Hungarian notation can be useful. I'm not using it in the sample projects that we are creating in this course, because generally we can easily just see the variable declaration here. But it's a judgment about whether you want to use it in your own projects. You may find it helpful or alternatively, you may just think that adding these letters just makes the variable names more confusing. That's something for you to decide. 